Hello friends, Marcelo here again and this is a channel where we talk about WordPress and theme development, plugin development, you know, everything related to WordPress. If you're new here, just subscribe to this channel, I think you will like the content being offered here and also why not share with your friends, especially if you have friends who are developers too. And of course, don't forget to click the bell icon so you don't lose any notification about new videos in this channel, all right? So in today's tutorial, we'll be talking about a WordPress API called Web Fonts API. We'll be using it to uh, add Google Fonts to our theme in a much simpler way than it was made before, all right? So without further ado, let's start. Um, I would like to start with this question I received from my uh, student Fabrico Sosa from one of my courses about theme development. And he asked me, hello teacher, how are you? What configurations should I do to use downloaded fonts? I want to use the font I downloaded and not the ones from Google Fonts. How do I do that? So. Uh, the process is basically the same if you use Google Fonts or if you use some uh, other custom web fonts, okay? So it's the same. I will be showing you guys how to do it. But before we jump into the uh, actual tutorial, I would like to briefly talk about uh, the some of the drawbacks of using Google Fonts and web fonts in your project. Because you know, guys, that there is the, this law called the DGPR, the General Data Protection Regulation. And uh, sometimes uh, Google Fonts, using Google Fonts and hosting your Google Fonts uh, with your theme can generate some conflicts with this uh, law. And why? Because this DGPR, the aim of this regulation is to give individuals more uh, control over their own personal data and sometimes uh, using Google Fonts and hosting those fonts and making requests to Google servers can expose some of the user's information, some, such as, for example, the IP addresses of those users. Uh, to illustrate this, I have this article here from the WP Tavern website that says that a German court fined website owner for violating the GDPR by using Google hosted fonts. Basically, what they are saying here is that uh, a German court decided to find a user, a website owner um, with 250,000 euros because uh, his website was exposing the visitor's IP address. And we don't want that in our project. <laughs> so with that in mind, the, the WordPress guys went there and started creating this API, this web font APIs. It was included in Gutenberg, which is a major project in WordPress. Everyone is um, tired of knowing that. In the past, we are using PHP to enqueue uh, those fonts in our theme. And now the process is much simplified by using uh, a new file called theme.json. The good thing is that now, if you want to host Google Fonts in your theme, it will not be conflicting anymore with this GDPR, all right? Uh, the other benefit is that you'll be uh, actually hosting your fonts locally and not making a new request to a Google server. So we're not using that URL that uh, we can um, get from Google. We'll be uh, downloading the fonts directly and then uh, putting them inside our themes folder and then use that font locally. Of course, uh, with that, we can uh, make our theme load faster. And how is that uh, possible? It's possible because of that file I mentioned earlier called the theme.json. The theme.json file is a newly created file uh, implemented in WordPress since WordPress 5.8 within the Gutenberg project, and it's used basically to um, center information, gather information and options about your theme in a single file. So it can, for example, uh, be used to add global styles to your theme and add, add a color palette, add um, rules about typography, and you can use it to control the theme as a whole 
or just uh, some blocks of the thing. For example, you can use to control a paragraph or just um, a block quote or just an image or a gallery block, whatever. And one of the good things is that you don't need to actually use the block-based thing in order for your theme.json to work. You can use it, you can leverage it within a classic WordPress theme. If you guys are interested, I have a course on Udemy about theme development in which I teach how to create this theme.json from scratch and all of the rules that you can add to it and many other things. In this tutorial here, as I don't want it to be so lengthy, uh, we'll be only scratching the surface of this theme.json file, all right? So the first thing we need for, for this tutorial is uh, actually um, download the fonts from Google. So let's go to Google Fonts and let's download a font called Teco. This one here. I will select uh, those weights, 300 and 400 and also 500, 600 and 700. All right, let's download them. Okay, let's go ahead and extract that file. And I'll be using this, uh, this variable font here, all right? If you want, uh, one of the things I recommend to you is uh, convert this TTF font to a WAF or WAF2 format, okay? But we'll be using in this tutorial this TTF font. The thing is that the WAF fonts are more suitable for use uh, in web projects. But for the sake of this tutorial, that's no problem. Let's move this font to my actual project. So I have a website already created for, for this tutorial. It's in my local sites and it's called tutorials inside this app public WP content uh, themes. I have this WP devs theme, which is the theme we'll be working with. All right. So let's um, add another directory here called assets and inside assets. I want another folder called fonts and then another folder let's call it tackle and paste the file here i have this project already uh, open in my vs code here so i have this assets folder here with the fonts i have downloaded this theme already has uh, this theme.json file in place so as I mentioned to you guys, this is the file where we can concentrate some settings about some configurations about the theme here. We have a color palette going on here. You can see here, we have uh, settings about layout and some specific rules uh, for the blocks, for the core paragraph block. But let's start from scratch here. So let's uh, delete all this and start from scratch. So, it, so you guys have a more global idea of what's going on in this file. So let's open um, curry brackets here and let's add a schema first. Let me copy the schema. I'll let all of this code available for you guys uh, in this the, in the video description. So what more version? So a version for this for this theme.json file will be version two. Let's add another object here, and this one is called settings. Create brackets. Inside it, let's add typography. So you see, guys, that uh, this uh, this schema is actually helping me uh, autocomplete this 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 file. So let's use here typography. Create brackets. Font families. And this one is an array of objects. And let's set the options for the actual uh, font. So another color brackets. First option I need here is called slug. So the slug of this font will be tackle. Then name. 
the name is also Teco. Font family now. And let's add Teco sans serif. And let's skip this tackle because I want to pass it into uh, double quotes. I escape it and then add double quotes here. And then once again, escape and double quotes, right? And then let's add the rules related to the font face itself. So for the font face here, I will be adding one more pair of curly brackets. And what's the font family for? This guy here is, um, of course, also Teco. And what is the source where this font is located in my project? So let's add a file. It's within the assets folder, fonts, Teco. And what's the name of the file? Let's copy it from here. Copy. Paste it here and then just remove the rest of the file. The rest of the path that I don't need. And what more? The font style. It's normal. And then the font weights I will need for this project. So these are the ones I have chosen in Google Fonts. So it's 300, 400, 500, 600, and 700. All right? Save this. And now let's go to our admin. Let's choose one of the, the posts I have in my installation. For example, this one here. And uh, let's choose a paragraph, for example. And when I click here under typography, I have this menu here. So when I choose, for example, font family, I can choose uh, the font I have already installed using the web fonts API. So. When I click here, you see that I have the tackle option. And notice that now the paragraph has this style applied to it. I can, of course, uh, increase the size of, of this font. And since I have also uh, selected some font weights for this font here, I can go back to this typography menu here and choose also appearance and choose one of the fonts, uh, one of the weights I have selected, for example. Let's choose both for now and we'll see guys uh, what I mean. So let's select it and then update here. You see that the bold style have been applied to this font here. And when I open this uh, post in the front end, let's see what happens. You notice that uh, here in the front end, uh, the style have been applied to automatically because uh, as I told you guys, the theme.json and those rules that we have set inside the theme.json will make uh, the CSS automatically load in our front end, but also in the front end. It's the same thing, right? So if, for example, I inspect this element here, this paragraph, you'll notice that uh, we have uh, a special class applied to it automatically called has tackle font family. And since we have also uh, specified a medium size for this font, we have also this this uh, class here has medium font size. And you see that we have the font weight of 700 applied to it, which uh, corresponds to that bold option we have selected in the in the back end, right? You can see here in this uh, styles uh, tab here that uh, it's applying actually a font family using a variable called WP preset font family tackle. This is interesting because you can use this variable, uh, this var here to, for example, um, create a CSS rule uh, to apply to any other block or uh, element in, in your website, in your front end, in a very simple way. So for example, if you have, for example, um, 
an element like this one here, you can leverage this variable here in your CSS file by using just a font family rule like this and then pass this variable to it. It's that simple, guys. So, all right, in a nutshell, this is how you will add uh, Google Fonts to your project or another web fonts to your WordPress theme project. All right, hope you guys have enjoyed today's tutorial. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to this channel and wait for the new tutorials here. And also share with your friends, with your developer friends. I think they will benefit a lot from today's tutorial, all right? See you guys later and bye!